Hello everyone. Welcome to civil engineering and stuff. And today's topic of discussion is preservation of timber. So in this uh, video lecture, we are going to discuss about the objective of a good preservative and why do we need to apply a preservative over the timber. And then we are going to discuss about the various kind of uh, preservatives that are available and how we apply these preservatives on the timber surface that we are going to discuss at the end of the video. So make sure you watch the video till the end and if you find this video useful make sure you like the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more information all right so let us uh, start our discussion over the objective of applying a preservative over the timber surface so the ultimate aim is to increase the life of the timber structure and by applying the preservative, we want to make our timber structure more durable. That is, uh, we want our timber surface to be resistant towards the adverse conditions. And we also want our timber structure to be safe from attack of fungus and insect. Right. So for that, we apply the preservative. So what are the various kind of fungus attack or the various kind of insect attack that we have already discussed in the previous lecture series, uh, link of which you can uh, find in the description box or in the card here, right? So you can watch the, uh, that video also. Then what are the requirements of a good preservatives? First of all, that a good preservative should allow a decorative layer to be laid upon it, right? It should not be like that once we have coated our timber with the preservative. Now the timber surface cannot be coated with any kind of decorative work, right? It should not be like that. After the coating of preservative, the timber surface should be free to apply some decorative treatment. A small quantity of preservative should be able to cover large area. It should be cheap and easily available and should not, upon application, have unpleasant smell. Then the penetration of preservative should be high and at least at a depth of 6 mm to 25 mm so that not only the surface but the inside of the timber is also safe from various kind of attack. Uh, the application of preservative should not hamper the strength and durability of the timber and the preservative should be non-inflammable and that preservative should be efficient in killing the uh, fungus and insects right that is it should be uh, strong enough capable enough to protect the timber surface from the attack of the fungus and insect okay apart from that uh, the preservative should be safe and harmless to human and pet animals and like i have already mentioned it should not affect the strength characteristics of the timber and uh, it should also be one of the characteristics of uh, preservative that upon the application of water over the timber surface, the preservative should not wash away, right? It should be uh, still be in intact and should be efficient enough to protect the timber from various harmful effects. Apart from that, the uh, preservative should not corrode the metals that are embedded into the timber surface. So these are a uh, few of the characteristics of a good preservative. Then let us discuss what are the different type of preservatives that are available. So we have a variety of preservatives. We have we can apply the ASC treatment. We have chemical salt, we have coal tar, we have chloride oil, oil paint and soligen paints. So let us discuss about each in detail. So first of all, we have ASC treatment, which is the copper chromate arsenic uh, powder. This was developed by Forest Research Institute Dehradun, and the composition of it, this product is that it contains one part of hydrated arsenic pentoxide, three parts of blue vitriol or copper sulfate, and four parts of potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate. Now, this composition is available in the powder form, right? The powder contains the these chemicals in this proportion and this is called as the ACU okay so this composition which is available in the powder form is mixed with water right so 100 parts of water 
is mixed with fixed part of ACU. Okay, so the chemical is formed and then it uh, this chemical paste is coated over the timber surface. Then we have the uh, chemical salts which are soluble in water uh, salts, for example, copper sulfate, mercury chloride, sodium fluoride, zinc chloride. These are mixed in the water and the coating is applied over the timber surface. These salts are odorless and are non inflammable and prove to work in a very satisfactory way. Next, we have treatment with the coal tar, and basically, in this case, uh, the timber surface is coated with the hot coal tar. Now, the surface that is coated with the uh, coal tar is somewhat non aesthetic, right? Uh, that surface gives a very unpleasant smell as well as it, it in the appearance wise, is not very pleasant, right? So, if we coat a timber with the coal tar, that cannot be used for the decorative purposes. So, in case uh, the timber or the wood has to be used for some uh, structural support or is being placed somewhere away from like the common eyes, uh, in that case, uh, the timber surface can be coated with the coal tar. It's a very cheap and a good uh, method of, of preserving the timber surface, especially from the uh, fire attack, right? Apart from that, uh, Coating the timber surface with the uh, coal tar make it um, provides better resistance from the moisture as well as from the insect and fungus. Next, we have the creosote oil, and creosote oil is one of the best antiseptic, and it is somewhat black or brown liquid that is obtained by the distillation of tar. Creosote oil is weakly affected by the water, and uh, one thing that is to be uh, taken care of is that. The creosote oil should not be used in the interior surface of any structure, right? It should not be used in the food storage stuff, in the underground installations, and near the inflammable surface. So, the surface that is to be coated with the creosote oil, uh, the timber surface has first of all to be seasoned and to be dried, and then it is inserted in an airtight chamber. Where creosote oil is pumped at a very high pressure of 7 kg per centimeter square at 50 degree Celsius temperature. And after one or two hours, uh, the timber surface absorbs the creosote oil and then it is taken out. Then the next variety of preservative is the oil paints. And basically, coating the timber surface with two to three coats of oil paint uh, makes the uh, timber surface free uh, or safe from the uh, moisture attack and uh, one thing to be taken care of is that the uh, timber or the wood surface that is to be uh, oil painted for the preservation should be well seasoned okay if the wool or the wood is not well seasoned then uh, the the rotting of the sap will take place which will lead to the early decay of the timber okay so your use of oil paints are very good in terms of resistance towards moisture if you are looking towards a better resistance towards the moisture. Then we have the solignum paints and solignum paints uh, protect the timber from the white ant attack and we have already discussed about this in the previous video so you can refer to that uh, for more information. Uh, one of the advantage of uh, using the solicum paint is that color pigments can be added uh, to this paint and because of which this can be used uh, for the decorative purposes, right? So mixing solicum paint with the color pigment can uh, enables the use of the timber for the decorative purpose. All right. So these were the various preservatives that are available. Now, how do we apply these preservatives? over the timber surface. So there are uh, six methods by which we can apply this preservative over the timber surface. The first one is brushing, then we are chairing, then we are dipping and setting, then we have hot and cold treatment, then injecting the preservative under pressure, and then we have the spraying. So let's first of all discuss about the brushing and one of the simplest methods that is available. So in this, uh, we have a brush, we have the preservative, we, we dip the brush into the preservative and then apply the preservative over the timber surface. 
one thing that is to be taken care of is that if there is any crack over, over the timber surface, it should be filled before applying uh, preservative via brushing. Right? This is one of the simplest method of applying the uh, preservative. Then we have charring, and charring is one of the oldest method uh, that is used uh, for applying the preservative. And technically, there is no exact preservative is being applied. Uh, so basically, uh, in charring method, what uh, we do is we we wet the timber surface for about half an hour or a one hour, and then we burn that surface to a depth of around 15 mm. Okay, so we have the timber surface. This timber surface is burned to a to a certain depth of 15 mm. Okay, now the uh, because of this, uh, the outer surface. is covered with a layer of coal and because of this formation of layer the timber is safe from the moisture attack and from the attack of insect as well as fungus all right but there is one major drawback that is attached with this method and that drawback is that charred surface become unfit for the decorative use right so the timber surface that is charred becomes unfit to be used for some decorative purpose the aesthetic beauty of the surface is destroyed apart from that the another major disadvantage is that upon the burning of the wood surface there is a compromise in the strength parameter right so these are two of the major uh, disadvantage that are attached toward this process so this process is basically adopted for uh, the wood that are to be used for lower end works like we have to uh, use the wood for fencing for uh, for for making poles for telephone poles and like that next uh, method of application is dipping and stepping and basically in this what we have is we have a tank that is filled with the preservative and timber surface is dipped into this tank that is filled with the preservative it is kept there for a certain period of time maybe for 1 hour maybe for 24 hours depending upon the uh, the viscosity of the preservative and the quality of the wood right and then uh, from time to time it is stepped that is uh, the wood is turned upside down right so this ensures like long a uh, long term period of exposure ensures that the preservative is being absorbed by the uh, wood surface completely okay we have hot and cold uh, tank treatment and basically in this what we do is we again submerge the timber into a tank that is filled with the preservative right or a solution of preservative and then this tank is heated for certain period of time at around 85 degree to 95 degree celsius now upon heating uh, the wood becomes soft and the absorption of the preservative takes place in a much better way right after this what happens is we allow the uh, tank to cool down while the wood piece is still submerged right so because of this the absorption of preservative takes place in a much better way and this method provides a better protection towards the sap of the wood okay so we have discussed about what is sap, what part of the wood is called as the sap of the wood in the previous videos so you can watch those videos from the uh, link provided in the description box or from the uh, keyboard here uh, you can check the playlist for the building materials and uh, you can get the desired information next is uh, applying the preservatives under pressure right that is injecting under pressure so in this we have a tank uh, and uh, uh, in this the woods are inserted and uh, under a high pressure the preservatives are applied right and conventionally this method is used towards the preservatives that have a certain high viscosity or or we want to uh, inject the preservative to a higher depth right so we have this uh, pieces of wood that are inserted under a, a tank which is uh, connected to a pressure assembly so the preservatives are inserted and 
under a high pressure and this method proves to be more efficient right especially for non durable timbers then the last method is strain and basically in this the solution is put into a sprayer and uh, the wood surface is first of all clean and over there the preservative is sprayed right again a very uh, simple method of applying the preservative over the timber surface okay so these are a few of the methods by which the preservative is applied over the timber surface so that's it for uh, this topic i hope the video was useful to you and if so uh, do like the video and post your views in the comment section uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you find this video useful or if you go to i have earlier gone through the channel if you find the video useful do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for regular notification thank you for watching have a nice day